After um, the second year it was planted, it it came, uh, it produced an apple. Oh. And so, and something ate it. Oh. So, so I'm guessing one of the seeds from the apple was deposited here by the animal, and now we have one here. And it actually is, you can see its bloom. It, it does a really nice uh, lavender purple so man mandroga it's um it has a lot of lore around it um i it's claim to fame i think was the harry potter movie but um so this is a very very toxic plant um, and um hildegard i just wanted to share the other ways of using plants she would use it, so this would be the female plant, and then there's a male plant, and the female plant produces the apple. And so she used it for people who had, who were lewd in their life. So, which I thought was, you know, interesting, because she's a, she's a, a nun, and she's got to cure the world of excesses, I guess. So what she would do for the, the, a man, she would take the female apple and would tie it to the body and have it hang here and they'd have to wear it for multiple days and it would cure them of their lewdness. And when you say apple, are we told what's It looks like a little, little tiny apple. It's hard, it's green. Um, what color do you say? Green? green? Yeah, it's the same color as the leaves. It's edible? No, no. This is a very toxic plant, and so I'm, I'm only showing it to you because I wanted to show how she used things outside of the body and not... Um, it's very biblical. It's almost biblical. It's a garden of Eden. Yeah. She might bite yeah. on that apple. Look at, I don't know. <laughs> You'll pay yeah. the price, yeah. Or also, she, so for the woman who was lewd, she would pull out... Lewd. Lewd. I'll uh, explain to you later. <laughs> Racy. <laughs> Sexy, sexy, hypersexuality. And you have to, Hildegard is a nun, so she's curing the world of these things. They're, they're notorious for being sexy. <laughs> oh, possibly, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, um, so I know a little bit of history about this plant um, in the herbal world um, from Culpepper and stuff. So there's, there's tales that if you dig up the root, you could die. So people would strap it to a dog and have a dog pull it out. Um, Did the dog die? I, I don't know. But I tell you, I haven't dug up one yet. So, <laughs> But reading her stuff, she would dig it up and immediately put it in fresh spring water and it would have to sit for a day and a night before it was purified. Because she also thought the devil lived in the root. And, it, and the root is supposed to have um, human-like form and that's why people have this image about it that it's it's housing spirits so she would soak it in the spring water and that would cleanse it and um, then she would use it for hanging it, the root or the apple over the person so the female would use the male plant which has I've never seen one but from her description it had has a longer stem to the leaf and more um, variegated and um, same thing with that one, you'd pull the root and you'd soak it. And the other thing that it would cure, um, which I've worked with an herbalist and he, he does this. Um, so is there some uh, version or application in today's medicine derived from many of those? Or is it just interesting? This is one that's kind of lost into, I think, um, it's just used in lore magic. Um, not a lot of people use it in their medicine because there's not a lot written about it to feel safe to use it. Um, it. It could kill you. I mean, an animal could eat the apple and die. Um, so we usually, because we have children that run around, we usually cut the apple off. But honestly, animals get to it first, so some animals can live off of eating it. Um, 
But um, another thing Hildegard would do is it's supposed to, she also based her medicine system on caloric melancholy sanguin, sanguinine. Um, so if you were really melancholy, you would sleep with the root. And you'd have to like really warm yourself because you'd want to sweat and this and you would sweat out the evil into the root that was inside you. So it would cure melancholy that way in her mind. So or you'd think, oh tomorrow will be better because I won't have to sleep with this and then the <laughs> renewed, right? Right. <laughs> what do we do with that root though? Sweat into it or how to dispose of it. I would imagine you put it back in the home and let it be reabsorbed. I know. So. Do you ever think that like wearing the apple on the exterior is sort of like a, a precursor to homeopathic medicine? Yes. There was definitely, she's in the 1100s, so um, I feel like science and spirituality were still together. And then it started branching out, and Hanneman, I think, was in the 1300s or 1400s. I know Paracelsus was more closer to the 1400s. Hanneman was the back. Um, founder of homeopathy. Uh, homeopathy. That's what it. Yeah, Bach the Flowers is. Um, I don't know the first name, but Bach, Doctor Bach. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's right. Hanneman with the homeopathy. So Hanneman sorry. was the. Um, um, the dosage is the medicine, so he would work with toxic plants and put them in dilution to um, stimulate the vital force to heal itself within the body. That's a very shallow rundown of that. But <laughs> um, so um, I haven't looked at the homeopathic. Uh, if there is a homeopathic, I mean, I actually know there is. I've taken it. I don't recommend it. But, um, Why did you take it for? learning purposes? Mm -hmm. My friend um, works with very low-dose medicine, and he often experiments with me. So, <laughs> I'm very vocal. You're still alive. I'm still alive. I mean, it is very um, low-dose. It's very diluted. And um, I actually, it's kind of funny, when I cut the leaves of the plant one day, um, my friend took it, and he made the medicine with it. and. I wasn't sure what to do with it because I was afraid of it. So I took two leaves and I slept with them. And it's very interesting when I read her stuff. And uh, I woke up the next morning and they had turned yellow. So something happened. There was a chemistry she between... She did an experiment and also cut them and laid them in a bed without a person. And see, see if, if they, they also change, turn yellow. If yeah. they oxidize that, that would be really <laughs> interesting. I know. That's what it does when it's cut, you know. Right. Regardless of well, I had some other leaves that were cut that were just exposed to they the air. Uh -huh. They didn't. Oh. So I don't know yeah. if it was putting the yeah. heat, just the heat made them oxidize faster. Did you, were, you, were they touching you while you were sleeping? Yeah, I put them on my chest. <gasps> right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I figured I couldn't absorb that much. But I don't know. I don't recommend that to ah. anybody else. That's just <laughs> a silly fun. experiment that I did. Um, the mad scientist here. <laughs> <laughs> I hope to be, <laughs> um, but there is definitely, from taking the medicine, it was an interesting, it, it's a, it's a, it's almost like a meditative medicine, mm -hmm. so, um, it's very interesting, but I wanted to share that one with you because it's um, unusual and she, she was working with something that was fairly poisonous, but it showed me that she still that knowledge was still being passed down to work with these plants mm -hmm. and there's definitely been a disconnect because um, the plague started well there was multiple years of plague and we lose we lost information after that so um, it's kind of I've, it's been said that we're in a renaissance of herbalism mm -hmm. I feel we are but maybe that's just in my life but um, I'm in, and being at Bastyr, I'm very immersed in sure. in it. So it seems like there's a large force going on. But then when I go outside of this area, people are like, "You use plants for medicine?" Uh, so 